very much. And now we'll call on Joe Cudlack to come up and minister to us from the Word. Joe? I'd like to open this with a short prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for your grace, all the blessings of this weekend. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to meet here and talk about your word. Thank you, above all, for your son, Jesus Christ. We pray for your help and guidance the rest of the evening. Uh, my theme tonight is resurrection in me, and uh, I'll give you the bad news first. I'll talk about me. For many years, I was just a drifter in the world, a uh, person that thought he was uh, going along and living all right, but uh, actually, you know, not really realizing that uh, what a sinner and uh, etc. was just by thinking that we were doing the right thing. And uh, different times, I had heard the gospel message, and perhaps I was close to it at times, and uh, it wasn't until oh, perhaps about less than three years ago, that by the grace of God, I was awakened to this fact that I have to confess Jesus Christ, and uh, this is a special day, Easter, kind of not more or less an anniversary, but it always seems to hit me harder at Easter. So even though I started biting my nails when Dr. Clock asked me to talk, I still think, for me, Easter is very important now. Uh, my upbringing was from a family where there was an established church and tradition was very strong and even notice today the commercial tradition seems to have taken over so so thoroughly I was just looking at one of those little uh, coloring rigs and they must have had a hundred little transfers and not one of them denoted anything that could be termed Christian or bring in any message at all uh, in uh, Colossians 2.8, talking about tradition, it says, uh, I'll just read this for you, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And uh, commercialism seems to be really working that way, not after Christ. There was, uh, oh, a couple weeks ago I was away and I was looking at a picture talking about Christ. And uh, this was a painting, and usually painting, I'm either looking at somebody painting a car or painting a barn. I am not going then that much culture, but this man had painted this picture. He was a Canadian painter, now dead, and he was a very realistic painter. He had uh, a very large group of people standing on a hillside, just like looking across this valley, and uh, the people were all well, this fellow's from northern Ontario and the west, and they're all working people. You'd think it was just a group like from Gouli River, Search Mount Wabu, standing there. And uh, across the valley was almost dark color, about the color of this, all black. And in the distance, there was a whirlwind. Uh, the fellow was standing, one man was standing down below, trying to get the people's attention. And over on the other side was a little speck, maybe on the horizon, and it was the figure of Christ. Now, uh, this man was trying to get the people to look away from the whirlwind, which represented Satan, to look towards Christ. And there was a large, dark void in between. Now, years ago, or not very long ago, this picture would have not had too much meaning for me. But I find now that uh, there is a lot of meaning even in the picture. And uh, talking about resurrection... If we didn't have a resurrection, that figure of Christ might have been a city or something else or a monument. I think we could be thankful that there was a living Christ for these people to look towards and not just a pile of rock. You know, a lot of times we get into some real tough work or things aren't going good. We have plumbing, shall we say, to do. And we don't know very much about it. How happy we are when some guy comes along that's a real qualified ace plumber can straighten us all out and get us on the path. Say we're fixing our car and we can't find what's wrong. And then a fella comes along with tools and he really knows what to do in about five minutes he's got everything straightened out. What a fella to come along or you're framing up a house and 
you're into a tough spot, you can't get things in square, and then somebody comes along, shows you just what to do, and in a few minutes you're back on the track again. So, I just want to tell you about these qualifications. I want to tell you about the qualifications <coughs> of the man concerned with the resurrection. The qualifications of Jesus Christ, which we could look at in Colossians 1, verse 15 to 19. I'd like to just take a minute and read you the qualifications of this man that's in the resurrection. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Now, we look at a lot of people in history and all the great things they've done. I think we could lump them all together and they would mean nothing when we look at the qualifications of Christ. How can I be helped personally where the me part is by this resurrection? I'd like to just turn to a passage in Romans here that I heard last night that really struck me. In Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. In this, the word of faith, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Confess, we are told, means to say the same, or it's got to be from our heart. And if I've never confessed, that I believe that Lord Jesus was raised from the dead, I'd like to confess it right now. And I think we should all remember that it's the important part of the resurrection. And these verses especially, where it says we have to confess it and with our heart believe that.
Also want to share with you something <clears throat> tonight about what the resurrection means to me <clears throat> beyond a shadow of a doubt the first thing it means to me is that I have a risen alive Lord and Savior as Joe pointed out for us tonight in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 it's an integral part of the gospel message that God has raised his son from the dead and there's two things that I thought of when I was asked to share something about this. And these are the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ gives us a distinction and a hope. When I say distinction, I mean that it separates true Christianity from everything else. There's nothing else that has a claim to it that Christianity has because of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mohammed didn't rise from the dead. The leader of the Mormons didn't rise from the dead. The one who started the Jehovah's Witness movement didn't rise from the dead. They all said, remember my words. Remember what I've told you. Left the book behind. But the distinction of Christianity is that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. There's an enormous amount of evidence in the scriptures to this fact. Paul testified of it in Second Corinthians chapter 15, First Corinthians chapter 15, if you want to look at how many witnessed the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a fact that's pointed out to us in the Bible. And that's an integral part of the gospel message. If you could enter into this thought for a minute with me of what did the resurrection mean to the disciples? They walked with the Lord Jesus on this earth. They came to a point where they did trust and believe in Him. The Lord asked Peter, Who did they say I am? He said, Some say you're a prophet. Some say you're like John the Baptist. He said, Who do you say I am? He said, You're the Christ, the Son of God. He believed who He was. And the Lord Jesus poured three years approximately of His life on the earth into the disciples then out from under them he was taken and put upon a cross and he died there now they scattered the Bible tells us Peter denied the Lord three times because he was going to be identified with one they dragged away and if you read about it it was a very very determined attempt and fulfillment of bringing somebody to task and putting them to death. They weren't about to be identified with that. All that they had followed and believed in and trusted in was taken out from under them. But oh, when they remembered the words he had spoken to them, that he was going to rise again after three days, and he appeared to them, to them in a room. It meant everything to them. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ meant everything to them. 
and the gospel message that went forth in the book of Acts substantiates this. In Acts chapter 4, we have the Peter and John being taken to task in front of the Sanhedrin, a council, for their preaching. Then we have this testimony in Acts chapter 4, verse 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. That's a distinction between any other message you could talk about. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is what they gave great power and witness to. Turn with me to Acts chapter 10. Acts 